This Sony Vio from 2008 may be small, but the job to repair and upgrade it was anything but. From how hard it was to access the hard drive and heatsink, to the impossible task of finding drivers for a 16-year-old laptop model that doesn't even exist according to YouTube. Well, unless you count this video. But let's pause for a second. Do you even remember when Sony made laptops? Because I remember when Sony made laptops. How can I possibly forget working on the most over-engineered, insanely expensive, expensive, anti-repair, unnecessarily complicated, but weirdly beautiful, ego-destroying pieces of shiny plastic that were so difficult to work on, they made me second-guess whether I would ever achieve the legendary status of, well, you know. But I don't remember this Sony Vio. And believe me, I would remember this nightmare dressed like a daydream. Because this VGN Z series Vio that cost two grand back in 2008, which is equal to nearly three grand in 2024, was the top of the line ultra portable notebook in a time where horrendous $200 Intel Atom powered netbooks dominated the small device category. The only thing that even came close to achieving as much power in such a compact form was the legendary Lenovo ThinkPad X200. But even that was still bested by the performance and graphical power of the Vio. And at two grand, you certainly got your money's worth. Because 16 years later, this thing is still kicking and ready for some long overdue upgrades. And as you'll see in this outrageously bizarre video, it will also be kicking my keister every single step of the way as I try to bring it up to date from finding replacement parts and drivers to performing routine maintenance that is anything but routine. But in the end, it will end up proving, without a doubt, that they just don't make them like they used to. Clocking in with an Intel Core 2 Duo, a dedicated NVIDIA GPU, and a DVD drive with a 1600x900 display, and this is still a perfectly capable device for watching movies and streaming videos. I even hooked it up to the HDMI on our shop TV because Lupe hasn't stopped talking about a show he watched when he was in Canada. But it turns out it's blocked in our country, which would have ruined the day if I didn't use private internet access, the only VPN that has my official mushroom stamp of approval. For those of you that don't know, a VPN is an app that hides your IP and encrypts your data so it's shielded from cyber creeps like this guy. And with PIA, geo-restricted media is a thing of the past. I can simply connect to any server I want in over 91 countries to unlock that country's content. Whether I'm on my computer, Android phone or iPhone, every major streaming service can be accessed without an issue. But what about the sketchy guy out back connected to our Wi-Fi? No need to worry there, Lupe, because with PIA, your connection is encrypted and your real IP is hidden from would-be criminals like that sketchball. And with a no-log policy that's been proven multiple times in court, we can trust PIA to protect us from the prying eyes of weirdos. And time may have run out for my friend here, but you still have time to use my code to get an 83% discount on PIA, which is just $2.03 a month along with four months completely free. Just check out the link in the description and start protecting yourself today. Wow, that was a great show. But I'm sure you're curious how I got my hands on this antique creature that was made in a time when companies took risks in their designs long before end shittification and stockholder profits ruined everything. And the answer is, this is a mail-in repair from one of my customers that knows how to take care of their stuff. Bought brand new in 2008, at some point they upgraded from Vista to 7 and then to 10, and were using it fine up until a few few years ago when the battery wouldn't hold a charge and even while using it for simple tasks, it started resembling the average influencer on Instagram. Hot and slow. Reluctant to throw it away, they decided to shoot me an email and ask me to clone the HDD over to an SSD, give it a good cleaning, and replace that thermal paste. Now, normally I would say no to these jobs for a few reasons. I knew these are built to never be taken apart, so the amount of time it takes to do even a simple job ends up costing more in my labor than the laptop is even worth. And being 16 years old, replacement parts would be nearly impossible to find or very unreliable. Meaning if I make a single mistake like breaking a a clip or ripping a cable, it could prove to be catastrophic. But my shop isn't normal anymore, because thanks to all of you that watch my videos, whether it's my brain-rotting shorts or my aneurysm-inducing long form, I've been able to significantly cut back on my workload while at the same time take on these more interesting repairs that I can share with you all here. And though I'm making way less money than I was before, I'm in a much happier place mentally. So I want to thank you all for that, seriously. But enough pillow talk, I need to save my energy for tonight's date with your mother. Speaking of saving energy,
energy? The battery on this stopped doing that a while ago, which means it needs to be replaced. A process that's so easy it makes me cry, reminiscing of a time when replaceable batteries were the norm. I also noticed this laptop has lost a few rubbers, but let's be honest, who hasn't? First things first though, I need to power it on before I start any repairs so I can confirm the issues that my customer is having. It takes 19 seconds to boot up and that's enough confirmation for me. Let's get to that HDD. Unfortunately on this model, the only access door is to the RAM, meaning the HDD is buried deep inside of this laptop. Which I was totally prepared for, but I was not prepared for the sight that greeted me once I got that panel off. Chaos. Absolute f***ing chaos. Sony's engineers definitely deserve credit for being able to cram so much power into such a small space, but it came at the expense of not being able to do even routine maintenance without requiring a complete teardown that would intimidate even the most battle-hardened, mentally abused technicians like myself. Thankfully, I was eventually able to pry this gooch-covered 320 gigabyte drive out, which I believe is the original one, and prepare to clone it to this crucial MX500 by performing my ritualistic clone dance so those pesky tech gods can bless us with good sectors and a speedy transfer. Now you may ask, how do I turn on our high-tech cloning station with no power button? And the answer is these. Are you sure that's safe? Are you sure that's safe? Are you sure that's safe? Ah! Uh-huh, I told you. Man, 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 man. Uh, oh well. Ugh. Babe, it's finally happened. Guess who's the greatest technician that's ever lived? <laughs> okay. What the? Where am I? Why is my mic still on? Is this hell? Who the f- Who is that? Wait, those are my si Is that me? Oh no, I'm trapped. Well, from what I've gathered, I've ended up in IT guy limbo, where I've been tasked with fixing this cursed laptop to determine whether I will respawn back into corporate controlled dystopian nightmare known as the present, or end up in IT hell, which consists of fixing alienwares all day and night while being bombarded with requests for free advice. What a predicament. Well, I better get back to work. With a little more unscrewing and far too much time spent getting this fucking power button cover off, Two fucking clips. Two fucking clips. How the fuck are you supposed to access these goddamn fucking clips right here without scraping the plastic? And Sony fucking engineers can suck my dick pieces of shit, man. That's so aggravating. How long did I fucking just spend on this piece of shit? My colorful words of frustration may have brought me one step closer to hell, but I finally got that panel off to expose the next layer of Dante's Inferno that consists of too many ribbon cables, wires, and a connector that looks pretty sus. My tiny raccoon-like fingers make quick work of these, and in no time at all, the board is ready to come out. Or it would have been if it weren't for this DC jack connector that the geniuses at Sony decided to shove in between the fan and motherboard with the only way to unplug it is to remove the entire f heat heatsink that's connected on both sides of the c board and has so much swamp gooch stuck in the vents and my gloves look like I just fisted a fucking camel. After gently placing a cloth down so the board doesn't scratch the screen, I calmly unplug that DC jack and the board is finally free so we can see how well that thermal paste has held up over 16 years. Then spend a minute to inspect the board's design while recollecting my thoughts. And I want to point out two things. Firstly, yes, that's a socketed CPU. You youngins might not remember this, but upgradable CPUs on laptops used to be a thing. Secondly, I can't believe they used such a tiny heatsink to cool both the CPU and a GPU that was notorious for cooking itself due to having bad solder. And lastly, these masochist engineers at Sony deserve a massive credit for being able to squeeze this much power into a board this small all the way back in 2008. But now that I've calmed down, it's time to clean the gooch out of that heatsink, which wouldn't have been possible if I didn't manage to steal Satan's toothbrush during my brief visit to hell just now. 
Weighing in six pounds lighter, the next step is to scrub away that crusty thermal paste from the Great Depression and replace it with some PTM 7950. And apply a new thermal pad to this chip as the old one seems to have dried out. Now that the chips are taken care of, it's time to relive some trauma by putting that heatsink sandwich back on. A task that requires some expert finger yoga, which, as your mother knows, happens to be one of my specialties. As is my attention to detail, since I always put screws back exactly where they belong first try. The greatest technician that's ever lived. Now taking apart something is always the easy part. Putting it back together is where things go wrong. And unfortunately, I'm not Boeing, so I can't just paint over a missing bolt and then kill the guy that exposes me. But I can make sure to concentrate and take my time, referencing the footage I recorded earlier to help me properly route the cables and ensure every last ribbon is plugged in and every cable is connected. Even the one that's sus. Finally, the top case goes on and the power button and DC jack caps return to their rightful spots. And since our clone is finished, I'm going to put the SSD in there temporarily though, because I want to make sure it works, since the last thing I want is to have to disassemble this nightmare again. Last and perhaps the most difficult is getting that stupid DVD drive back in there, because there's a hidden screw that's only accessible if you pop open the DVD tray with a paper clip. And because there's no documentation or YouTube videos on this model, I had to figure this out myself. But now that's in, I'm going to connect the keyboard temporarily to test that clone, even though I know for a fact it was successful. Oh. I'm not panicking yet though, because I've seen this enough times after a clone to know I just have to boot up my portable version of Macrium Reflect to correct the Windows boot files. And sure enough, we're in. Now before reassembling, I should probably test the Wi-Fi and speakers to make sure everything else works. Nah, I'm just gonna run a stress test, because I never forget to plug in ribbons before I completely reassemble a device that takes 10 years to take apart. Well, uh, somehow an hour has passed, but the stress temps are looking good. The software, however, is not looking good. For some reason, my customer installed a 32-bit version of Windows 10 when this is a 64-bit CPU, which, besides only being able to recognize 3 gigabytes of RAM, severely cripples the potential power of this pocket rocket. And though working on this has made me want to frisbee it through a window, I've grown fond of this antique piece of shit and want to see it completely maxed out to its limit. I also want to reward my customer for choosing to do business with me from all the way across the country, even if it means spending a few more hours in limbo. Noticing there's no data saved on this drive, it wouldn't be difficult at all to install 64-bit Windows 10 and surprise them with 8GB of RAM. The only problem I anticipate is finding drivers. But looking at Device Manager now, he already has that problem. Thankfully, Limbo has a cell service, so I give him a call and he couldn't have been happier to agree. So in goes my Windows 10 USB, and I wait. And wait. I waited so long my hair grew, until I was suddenly awakened by the voice of Satan herself. Hi there. Which shocked me unconscious and gave me some time to share my thoughts with you. I've had a lot of time to think while I've been stuck in Limbo here for... 69 days now, and I've come to a few conclusions. Now in a time where all companies are going green and spending millions of dollars in PR to make commercials about how they're hugging trees and recycling their own piss to feed to their employees, what they're leaving out is they're designing their products for their stockholders and not for the consumer or the earth. Now everybody watching this video knows it, we're all aware of it, there's nothing green about making a product unrepairable or unupgradable. Because the greenest thing that you can do is make your product last. This laptop that's 16 years old and costs about $2,000 brand new is still working in 2024 because it was able to be taken apart upgraded and repaired. I'd like you to name one modern laptop that you think will last 16 years. And don't say framework, because that's cheating. Because we all know framework is going to outlast all of us. We'll be in our hundreds, hopefully I hope you all live that long, and framework will still be upgradable and still selling parts. I hope framework takes over the entire world. I also hope they sponsor me. Now every time somebody in the comments section of a new laptop that has soldered storage or soldered RAM comments about the fact they can't upgrade it and it's not a good thing they can't upgrade it, you'll always have some neckbeard that hasn't seen the sun in weeks comment that, well the RAM's faster and the storage is faster. Who f***ing cares? Who f***ing cares? This laptop is 16 goddamn years old with 8GB of RAM and a 64-bit Intel Core 2 Duo and it runs YouTube perfectly fine. It does off work. It can browse the internet just fine. 16 f 
14 years old. 99% of consumers don't give a shit about speeds of the damn laptop. As long as it does what they need it to do within an acceptable amount of time. We reached that point as soon as we started installing SSDs into modern computers. That's where we hit the point where we got fast enough for most consumers not to care anymore. For enthusiasts, of course, I can understand. For gaming computers and for engineering computers, I can understand you want something faster. But for the average consumer, there's no way that you'll notice that difference. And the cons far outweigh the benefits. Because that laptop now has a death date. It will eventually die and not be able to be repaired. The only thing that you'll be able to repair on that laptop is the battery, assuming that you can actually buy one. We are going to have an epidemic of laptops and computers and cars everything that is completely usable but needs small repairs, they're gonna end up in a landfill or the junkyard because no one's gonna wanna repair it because it costs too much or the parts aren't gonna be available or the parts cost too much for even the consumer to repair them. So what's my suggestion? Well, my suggestion is to learn how to repair your own stuff as much as you can. And I hope in between all the fornication jokes and potty humor in my videos that you learn something. And if you don't learn it from me, you learn it from another YouTuber, somebody else. Information is free on the internet, take advantage of it. Because repair shops like mine will be a thing of the past very soon. There will always be shops that can build you a new computer, gaming PC, whatever, but shops that will actually be able to repair your older laptop, it's not, it's not looking good. And I don't know if I'll ever make it out of here, but I do want to genuinely thank you for allowing me to repair devices like this and give my customer's device a new lease on life where they would otherwise end up in a landfill. So what you can do is learn how to repair something yourself or buy a used computer from SalemTechSperts.com coming soon. And I will personally mushroom stamp them for you to make sure that they pass our quality control test and that they last you because I want computers to last. And that's all. That's the end of my spiel. Hopefully someday I will make it out of here. I miss food. There's no bathrooms here. I've, I've had nothing to eat. My mouth is parched. My hair won't stop growing. I've become blonde somehow, but let's get back to this repair. Knowing I'm close to freedom, I use Snappy Driver to help me narrow down my search, only to realize I need a specific piece of Sony software to activate the NVIDIA GPU, which is apparently what this lovemaking switch is for. No big deal, right? Well, that software is impossible to find. Sony's website goes straight to a f you, and their software on the Windows Store continues the torture by just throwing a random error rather than having it just tell the truth, which is, of course, F you. It's not the end of the world, however, as my customer plans on just using this for basic things like YouTube, internet browsing, and office work, which, as I show here, it does just fine. But it still sucks knowing a perfectly capable device can't reach its full potential due to software simply not being available or supported anymore. An upcoming issue millions of people will experience soon when Windows 10 is no longer supported. A decision that I believe will lead to the biggest e-waste event in modern history. But with one last restart to go, I keep my fingers crossed that the blood, sweat, and tears I've shed on this device has earned me a pass back to Earth where I can see my best friend and my loyal wife. Oh god, please work. Oh my god, it works. It works. It works. It works. I'm out of here. I can leave. I can leave. Oh, I get rid of this hair. Whoa, I have pants on. Where's my wallet? Where's my hat? Where's my keys? Ow, why is my butt hurt. Lupe, are you still out there? Yeah, I'm gonna ready to call the locksmith that I found here on Google. Hold on, what the? I'll call you back, I'll call you back, I'll call you back. I forgot how strong I was. <laughs> oh God, thank God, Lupe. Is that my hat? Nah, I got this on SalemTextWorks.com, man. Wait, are you sure? Turn around. That, that, I never sold that publicly. That's not your hat, man. The greatest technical team, El Lupe, EL. Damn, Lupe, why'd you park my car all the way over here, man? No, kind of had to hide from someone. Oh, Let me open the door for you, man. Ooh, wow, it's hot in here. You got the, uh, you got the keys? Oh, snap. Uh, let me go grab that one second, man. All right. Oh, it sure is taking a while. Hey, man, got your keys for you, man. Oh. Well, shit. You know what? Nah. You'll be reincarnated and turned into a bottle someday. Ugh. All right, baby, it looks like, uh... It worked this time around. You can order the wallpaper. I'll give a call to the locksmith now. And hopefully we can crack that safe that Andy left in the basement. 